The tragic bridge collapse may have impacts on upcoming cruises. Also, Royal Caribbean, what you doing? You're, you're striking fear in beach clubs around the world. And there's a cruise line out there that just made up a whole new job for this guy. Um, yeah, I, I think Adele might be mad. Cruise news and my views. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lido Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news and views for your face, for your face on the 26th of March, 2024. It's a Tuesday, and the show begins with tragic news coming from Baltimore in Maryland, where at 1.30 a.m. this morning, a cargo vessel named the Dolly ran into the Francis Scott Key Bridge, causing it to immediately collapse. Witnesses say that within seconds of the impact, the bridge collapsed. There were people on the bridge. There's a massive search and rescue effort going right now, uncertain as to what the outcome of the people that were on the bridge cars, tractor trailers going into the water. Officials there in Baltimore are bracing the community that there could be uh, massive casualties. And so uh, it's still unclear as to what the uh, loss of life impact will be there. That's certainly what makes it tragic. There could be future impacts on cruises. Fortunately, it doesn't look like there's a lot of cruising going on in Baltimore right now. And I'm not sure if this bridge is the only way to get to the cruise terminal. But there are some cruises coming up for Carnival Cruise Line in April. The first one starting on April the 7th. So um, that seems like a long time away. But again, if this is the only way to get to the cruise terminal, will that be rectified? Carnival already fielding requests from their customers. What does this mean for our cruises? And Carnival, like everybody else, just watching from a distance, trying to figure out what the human impact of this tragedy is as the search and rescue occurs. It'll be days before the tactical infrastructure type conversations happen. But certainly, uh, we know how we are as people and cruisers. We want to know how it's going to impact us. Uh, fortunately, the us that's impacted, uh, at least they're not going to be impacted for at least another week or so. It's, it's 12 days. It's 12 days until the 7th of April. So certainly in the next few days, we'll know more and possibly the cruising impact question will be answered. Hopefully, hopefully the search and rescue yields good results. We'll continue to watch this throughout the day. Cruise news story number two. Can we talk about the cruise port of Antigua? They had a record breaking cruise day serving over 15,000 cruise passengers. That's 15,000 cruise passengers across six cruise ships. This is the most ever for the twin island nation of Antigua and Barbuda. This happened on March the 12th, 15,808 passengers. It's a testament to the increased popularity in cruising. We're seeing these record-breaking numbers at popular cruise ports all over the world. So of course, why not Antigua? Now, before we get too much further into today's episode, let's circle back to yesterday's episode in an interesting uh, United States versus the Commonwealth conversation about the word grotty. G-R-O-T-T-Y. I mentioned in the conversation yesterday that an Australian woman named Karen, who was complaining about her cruise, used the word grotty to describe her dirty balcony. And a lot of folks from the U.S. chimed in and said, I don't think the word's grotty. I think it's grody. You know, like the California Valley Girl culture, gag me with a spoon, grody to the max. Well, that word is a word, G-R-O-D-Y. It's a different word than grotty. And so interesting. Interestingly, uh, you know, I got some affirmation from people in Australia that they use the word grotty, grotty. It's grot, right? You know, grotty. But then also somebody sent me a clip saying that uh, this was also a word that was used by George Harrison of the Beatles in the movie Hard Day's Night when he called some shirts dead grotty. The dead grotty, grotty, yeah, grotesque. So we got grotty to the max and we got dead grotty. Very interesting. I'm, I think the words are probably related. They essentially mean the same thing, but a uh, U.S. slang versus a Commonwealth, you know, British, Australian, New Zealand slang. Uh, learn something new every day. Uh, also, big news. I finished the Beatles Lego. 
Wow, these, these turned out super cool. This is why I love this community because a very enriching conversation down in the comments. Thanks everybody who participated. All right, let's talk about cruise news story number three, a little related to a story yesterday. Talked about MSC making their way into the Amazon River for the first time. And a lot of you folks pointed out that there's a lot of cruise ships that go to the Amazon River. Uh, it just exposed uh, a part of the world that I'm not super familiar with. I'm not super familiar with Amazon cruising, but I'm interested in it. But can we talk about another famous river, a river that reminds me of myself when I'm looking in the mirror every day going, someday I'm going to have six pack abs. You know, the river that I'm talking about, denial, the Nile down in Africa. We've got a cruise line Viking. They're introducing a new river ship for the Nile. This one's called the Viking Hathor. Now this isn't like a big cruise ship. This is more akin to a river cruise ship, but uh, just look, I just wanted to make that Nile joke, I think. But no, really to give some uh, fair time to the great rivers around the world, the Amazon, the Nile, the Danube, the, the, the Thames, I almost said the Thames. Cruising is vast and exciting and you can cruise the ocean, you can cruise the rivers and you can cruise on the Nile. And certainly if you do cruise on the Nile and you plan to commit some crimes, don't cruise with Hercule Poivre. Now, before we get to the next cruise news story, just a quick reminder, it is Tuesday. So that means at 9 p.m. tonight, we'll have Cruise the Night Live. Live show tonight, 9 p.m., right here on this YouTube channel. But you're saying, well, the, the hour at nine isn't enough. Can I get more? Well, well, yes, you can. We also have the exclusive Patreon live stream tonight at 8 p.m. This is for the people that have joined our community over there on Patreon, www.patreon.com forward slash Lalita Loca. For the low, low price of five bucks a month, less than most Dunkin' or Starbucks cups of coffee, you can get some extra live shows. So like the big show tonight, there'll be a thousand people that you know, you're trying to chat in, but the exclusive shows, there's only about 30 or 40 people. So a lot more intimate with Jenny and I, and uh, we would love to have you over there on Patreon. Hopefully we see you on the live shows tonight. Cruise news story number four, you gotta wonder if these beach clubs around the world are sh -sh shaking, whoa, 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 shout out Ludacris. Are they shaking in their boots as Royal Caribbean continues to announce their own beach club at popular cruise ports. We know that in the Bahamas, they've built the preeminent private island and they can get a ton of people on the perfect day at Coco Cay, but not content with just that island there in the Bahamas. They want, they want a beach club on Nassau. And so they got approved to build a beach club on Nassau. And yeah, that's cool. There, you know, Nassau could use a, another nice beach club, but there is a cruise port that already has a lot of nice beach clubs. Um, many of us have been to Mr. Sancho's. Many of us have been to Paradise Beach Club in Cozumel, one of my favorites. Many of us have been to Chocanob and other beach clubs there in Cozumel, but soon there will be an option for cruisers to go to a Royal Caribbean branded beach club in Cozumel. Royal Caribbean's making no secrets about it. The big wigs from Royal meeting with the big wigs over there in Quintano Roo. You got Michael Bailey, the president of Royal Caribbean International. You got the big daddy himself, Jason Liberty, the president and CEO of the Royal Caribbean Group. They've met with the Secretary of Tourism in Quintano Roo and the mayor, the Secretary of Tourism is Bernardo Riestra and the mayor is Juanita Alonso. And they're happy as a full pinata of candy because they've got their drawing and their renderings for the next Royal Caribbean Beach Club. And it's a, it's a broad strategy. It's part of Royal Caribbean's Royal Beach Club collection. So all of this is indicating to me that Royal is uh, moving on to land a little bit. I think it's a smart strategy. Nothing better than being on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship, understanding what that product is, and then being able to get off the cruise ship and maybe experience that product on land. Gonna have all the amenities, swim up bar, dedicated pools for families, cabana, snorkeling, kayaking, beaches. It, it's a bold strategy. Uh, one I'm assuming that local beach clubs are paying close attention to. What do you think? Good for cruisers, bad for cruisers. 
leave a comment below. Cruise news story number five, exciting news coming out from the port of Jacksonville. This is one of the smaller cruise ports on the East Coast, the northern part of Florida. This is a cruise port that makes cruising available for a lot of people there in the Southeast. And well, good news is coming out that Jacksonville, the port of Jacksonville has renewed a contract with Carnival Cruise Line to keep cruising in Jacksonville until 2026 or through 2026. The contract that was just signed also has provisos for a yearly renewal. So hopefully this means there will be continued cruising from Jacksonville for a good amount of time to come. Uh, sadly, I think we've already finished or we're in our last year of cruising from Charleston, South Carolina. That city saying, look, we don't want it anymore. Carnival, take your ships and go away. So at least Jacksonville there on the East Coast, still a thumbs up. This is definitely good news for East Coast cruisers. All right, now I got to tell you about Tom Curse. This guy has a crazy job for a cruise. I think it's a one of a kind job. I think it's a job that Adele maybe applied for or should have applied for. I think I know why she didn't get it. Not an entertainment job, but a different kind of job. I'm going to tell you all about that. But first, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like staying up to date with everything going on in cruising, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. Thank you in advance. Well, Tom Curse is an astrophysicist. He has a pedigree in astronomy that is enviable. He could probably easily identify Orion's belt or the Big Dipper up in the night sky. He probably knows that that's Cassiopeia. Well, he's got a cool job. He is the chief Aurora chaser for Hertegruden. You may remember the story a couple days ago, Hertegruden guaranteeing being able to see the Northern Lights if you go on one of their 11-day you know, a Northern Light cruises, and they would give you a free cruise if you didn't see it. Well, I guess you got to have somebody to make that guarantee solid, and uh, it's this guy. Now, the reason that I say Adele maybe should have, you know, applied for the job, or maybe she didn't get it, uh, well, you know, he's chasing lights, and she's just chasing pavements. What do you think? This is a wild job, a one-of-a-kind job. Uh, if you could make up a one-of-a-kind job on a cruise ship, what would it be? And who would you give it to? Boom, that's your cruise news. Hope you enjoyed the show today. Don't forget the live shows tonight. I also did an update on my thyroid surgery over on the Tony Barnett channel. I'll leave that linked at the end. Thank you guys so much for checking in. Hit that like button. It's Tony for La Lido Look. Until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye. Cruise.